and certainly the most important nutrient for the past one to two years, which is glutathione. And you and I did a podcast early on, I think it was last spring, all about glutathione and how we use oral acetylated glutathione, we'll use liposomal glutathione, we'll even use mm -hmm. nebulized glutathione. And it's been an absolute game changer for so many people. I would even go as far as to say I've saved lives using glutathione. I will just leave it at that. But it's an amazing compound, probably the most important compound. And uh, our, our mentor, awesome guy, Dr. Kalish, he did a great talk very recently on glutathione. And he was showing how important glutathione is with the body and the body will prioritize glutathione production even over methylation and how important it is to really get this system working properly. And everybody's focused so much on methylation and they're ignoring glutathione production. Everyone gets so caught up in MTHFR and genetic defects and all that, but they're totally missing the boat on glutathione. And this is your master antioxidant that is depleted during times of stress and during toxin exposure. So that could be any type of pathogen that could be mycotoxins. We know that mold toxin will deplete glutathione and you and I measure this routinely on urine testing. And I see low glutathione all the time. If we see organic acids that are too low or too high, we know that there's a dysfunction going on. And this is something that can easily be remedied and supplemented. And we have very, very high quality sources that we use for people. 100%. So glutathione is a tripeptide, right? So when we use glutathione, we're going to kind of put glutathione and NAC in a similar camp. It's good to have both. Um, NAC helps with your helps your body with endogenous production, meaning it helps your body make it. As cysteine tends to be the rate limiting amino acid in making glutathione. So glutathione is a tripeptide. So it's got cysteine, glutamine, glycine. Glycine is really great in, in collagen and bone broth. Um, glutamine, you're going to just see in, in a lot of gut healing formulas because glutamine is, is needed for healthy gut function. So if you have a healthy gut or you have an unhealthy gut and inflamed gut, you can see how glutathione one absorption. And um, of course, the stress is going to deplete a lot of those amino acids just in the stress process. And so then uh, you make glutathione via those three amino acids. And then also you have exogenous glutathione. That's giving someone S acetyl glutathione or liposomal or some kind of a reduced glutathione, which are all great. Um, those are all going to be exogenously, you know, from the outside in endogenous is making it inside with the amino acids. So it's good to help with both. We know the data on glutathione, it helps with inflammation. It has an effect on modulating the immune system, modulating TH or T regulatory cells and balancing that TH1, TH2 immune response. TH2 is going to be the antibody response. The TH1 response is going to be the natural killers of the special forces of our immune system. And then of course, glutathione helps produce compounds like um, a lot of enzymes like catalase and a lot of good natural disinfectants like superoxidase mutase and things that help with lung and inflammatory health inside the lungs. You're going to make a lot of these compounds with glutathione, which are very powerful on the immune side. <clears throat> Excuse me, I need some glutathione now <laughs> on the immune side and also on the anti-inflammatory side. So like for instance, with a lot of lung health issues or breathing issues, we may even give reduce glutathione in a nebulizer because that is shown according to research to help with inflammation and to help with vasodilation in the lungs. So very powerful anti-inflammatory, very powerful disinfectants because of the superoxide, it's mutase and that catalase enzyme, which is really important for inflammation. Yeah. Well said. I mean, every hospital, especially every ICU, especially when it, with lung issues, I mean, every ICU should be passing out glutathione nebulizers. It's amazing that that's not standard practice. That's not standard procedure. We would see much, much, much healthier people, faster recovery times, if that were part of the protocol. Yeah, I've had some patients with some serious lung issues who we nebulized some reduced glutathione and within a day, we saw massive, massive improvement. And we know things like NAC, for instance, is shown to reduce virus replication. So that's very powerful. So when, you're, when a virus kind of gets into your cells, it replicates and that's how it creates symptoms. The viral load has to replicate. And if you have nutrients in there like NAC, and or glutathione, that's going to prevent the virus from replicating to higher numbers. So very, very important there. And of course, the higher the viral load is, the more you can spread it. If you keep the viral load down, the less chance of spreading an infection. So that's powerful there. And, and you and I take that medicine. ongoing. Yeah, you and I yeah. take that ongoing. We do, uh, depending on what's going on, we're not telling you to do this dose, but what you and I are doing, at least I know for me, 
Uh, I've got a combo product. So we're using uh, glutathione, give or take a couple hundred milligrams per day of an S acetylated glutathione, which in studies is just as good, if not better than liposomal, because with liposomal, we have some really sensitive people, me included. I don't really do well with ethanol and a lot of the alcohol that, that is in some of these liposomal formulas. So I personally stay away from those. I like the acetylated. I feel great with it. It works very, very well papers prove how well it works. And then about a gram, give or take of NAC. So that's kind of my ongoing protocol. And also for toxin exposure, that also helps protect against the oxidative stress that also helps to deal with mold toxin. We know glutathione can help mobilize toxins. So that's something we use in detox protocols too, not even just for immune and viral support. 100%. And so virus replication, good immune prevent prevention, acute respiratory issues, all wonderful applications. I do about two grams a day of, glut of um, N-acetylcysteine and maybe one to 200 milligrams of a glutathione, whether it's reduced <clears throat> acetyl or liposomal, I'll kind of rotate between the two. So that's powerful out of the gates. Last and call. Kind of Let me make one what? comment on the NAC and then we'll move on. So mm -hmm. at the time of this recording, uh, Amazon has taken all NAC off of its marketplace. And there's many reasons that I could get into and probably get deleted for, but we'll just say that NAC is gone, but you and I, we work with professional healthcare companies. We do still have some availability. So we will put links in the show notes because this is something that I would recommend you have on hand. And if Amazon's going to take it away, at least we have it. So I think that's important to know. I think so too. I like NAC. Um, in my product, Detox Aminos, we have reduced glutathione plus some NAC in there as well. I know you have a product similar as well. We'll put links below so you guys can see that. And we're going to kind of divide up a lot of the compounds, like five herbal slash immune compounds, and then we'll kind of look at the nutrients. And I always tell patients, like, focus on the nutrients first, just because they're nutrients, like they have other roles in the body, and it's good there. So